Hello, my name is Edward Benyus, and I'm the Oboe Professor and the Director of Orchestras at Southern Illinois University Carbondale. I'm going to demonstrate some passages and then play from Fairling Etude No. 29 in E major for Oboe. First of all, please number your measures in this etude so you can follow along. Note that the etude is in 2-4, but it's marked Andante Amabile with a metronome marking of 88 to the eighth note. And we're near the railroad track, so you might hear a train in the background. So that's 88 to the eighth note. So we count this in four. You can go one and, two and, or it's easier probably to go one, two, three, four. And if you're counting in four with the eighth note as the beat, then there are four 30-second notes for every eighth note. In measures, we've got a couple ornaments uh, in here which are a little tricky. They're in measures 3 and 27. And they're little turns and they occur on a 16th note. So we're going to play four notes on those turns and then uh, the four notes become 64th notes. So four 64th notes equal one 16th note. If you want to play the oboe, you have to be good at math. So let's hear uh, those ornaments, uh, first the one in bar three. I'll play the whole measure. So the four sixty-fourths are on the E, and then you jump up from that E to the C sharp. And the one in measure 27 is on the B. And those four 64th notes would be C sharp, B, A sharp, and then back to B. That's why that sharp is, uh, appears underneath the turn indication. Let's hear that ornament, or that entire bar. Now the hardest part of this etude, of course, is the cadenza in measure six. First of all, there's a breath after the first note in measure six. Make sure you take that breath because you're going to need it for everything that you have to play following measure six. After you take that breath, your high E, the highest note in the bar, you're going to need to play the high E on the right side with your index finger hitting the uh, G sharp key and your pinky hitting the E flat key on your right. The reason you do that is because the next note, D sharp, you need to use your pinky on the left side for the, um, on the B key here. In this cadenza, uh, it's a bit daunting, so you wanna take it, practice it slowly and not all at once. Break it down into groupings of three, five, and nine notes. And the first three, first three or first five notes are the most difficult, starting from that E. And that B sharp is the same as a C natural, of course. Note that there are, after the high E, there's eight notes that are marked as 32nd notes, there's four notes that are marked as 16ths, and four notes that are marked as eighth, and all of that is indicated ad lib or ad libitum, which means it's at the performer's discretion. To me, this implies that once you hit, once you start playing those notes following the E, it's a gradual decrease in tempo. It doesn't have to be exact 30 seconds and exact 16 and exact eighths. Let me try and play the uh, cadenza starting on the high E. And the last four notes also are legato tongue because they have the dots on. Now there's a couple other uh, parts of this etude I'd like to point out. In measure 12, we have a full diminuendo uh, down to a piano, and then in 13, a crescendo from piano to forte. So make sure you pace your diminuendo in bar 12 uh, and your crescendo in bar 13. Also in bar 12, don't forget that the A sharp carries through the bar, so there's a total of three A sharps. Let me play those two bars for you.
And that breath is there because you need a breath and also to make a nice phrase on that B in bar 14. And measure 18, take a note of the rhythm in this bar. There's a total of six 16th notes followed by three 16th note triplets. So the G sharp comes directly on the fourth beat of the bar. Let me play that bar for you. Notice when I play a demonstration, I always go to the beginning of the next bar because that's where the phrase goes to. Um, one other little uh, fingering note in bar 23, we have an F sharp to G sharp trill on the fourth beat. And if your oboe's in proper adjustment, you can keep your G sharp down and only trill this. If to trill both fingers together is a little bit awkward. And when I say it has to be in proper adjustment, the, the uh, adjustment screw right here that lands on this key has to be down so that when you press the G sharp, it doesn't, uh, that key doesn't open up. Here, I'll show you. And I press the G sharp and nothing happens. And when we do the trill then, rather than, which is a disaster. Okay, one final note about this etude. Remember that this is music from the Romantic era. So you wanna hold your eighth notes and quarter notes, their full value, for example, in measures eight, 16, and 20. So here's, let me play bars bar seven and eight for you and notice in the eighth note in bar eight is for the full value. Meaning you stop the note on beat four and not before. Same thing in measure 16. And I'll demonstrate measure 16 in a second, but note when we get to 16, we're gonna hold our second eighth note all the way to beat three. Um, but another, uh, thing to emphasize as you're thinking about this as romantic music is when there's ascending or descending lines that move chromatically, you want to really use your air and blow through those sections. And the examples of those would be in measures 4, uh, 10, bars 15 and 16, and bar 19. So here's bar 19, for example, when I go from D sharp, D natural, C sharp to B. And I said I was going to demonstrate also bars 15 to 16, the chromatic movement from the C double sharp to the D sharp, uh, and then holding that D sharp the full value. Okay, now let's hear all of etude number 29 in its entirety. 